It's enough to make old Stalin turn in his grave. Two Cold War enemies, the original space race rivals, walking side by side. American astronaut Frank Culbertson, flanked by Russian cosmonauts Vladimir Dezhrov and Mikhail Turin, back from a flight to the International Space Station. This ritual comes after each successful mission. Flowers laid at the feet of the very first spaceman, cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin. Ever since Gagarin blasted his way into the history books in 1961, space travel has been the exclusive preserve of an elite. Military flyers, scientists, perhaps the odd ring-in. But a new era is fast approaching, the era of the paying customer and the corporate sponsor. This is just another place to do business. So if they can come up with agreements to put a McDonald's on board the International Space Station, I say let this process begin. Let the marketplace determine who plays and who is present. To be totally frank about it, I think the Russian aerospace industry will be aggressive in pursuing every opportunity that presents itself. I think that's, that's a good thing. Star City, highly secretive, and until the collapse of the Soviet Union, impenetrable. <laughs> Training centre for Russia's cosmonauts and their secluded home. It's where old cosmonauts see out their days. But the glory days here are long gone, and Star City shines no more. A lot has changed in the 40 years since Yuri Gagarin made his historic flight. These days, both the Russians and the Americans are scrambling for enough money to keep their space dreams alive. So the next space race won't be about national pride like the last one, it'll be about making money. And the Russians, it seems, are set to achieve another first, with their vision for mass tourism in space бюджетного пресса на государство, на налогоплательщиков. Чем больше значит, агентство или организация государственная будет зарабатывать денег сама, тем меньше она будет требовать этих денег от государства. Это же не от ума, а от нищеты и от такого русского стиля в рыночной экономике. Понимаете, вот мы все можем довести до противоположности. Идея коммунизма прекрасная, да? Довели до массовых расстрелов. Значит, вкратце, накладывается пару датчиков на груди. Meet space tourist Werner Schäppi, an executive banker from Zurich, on his fifth visit to Star City. I want to see uh, the, the, the Earth from, from space, that's my, my dream and that's why I want to go there, I want to see the stars very close. Werner has no immediate plans for space travel. The price tag for a flight is at least 20 million US dollars. That's well outside a banker's salary, so Werner just pays for space training. If I feel bad, I just leave it and the centrifuge will stop. Today's little exercise in the centrifuge cost him more than 2,000 US dollars. Stay quiet because your heart rate is a little bit high and uh, heart pressure also. I know, yeah. 
Oh, relax. It's over in a matter of minutes. Than I expected, you know. It's, uh, He's already spent a small fortune, but is prepared to part with much more. The Russians are promising he too will soon be able to afford his fantasy flight. Let's say I'm not flying business class to come over here. I say for the other things, uh, I don't have a family to support. So uh, I spend about $50,000 so far. And uh, I save for my money. That's uh, like somebody saving for his holidays to go to Australia or somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so it's money well spent. Yes, of course. I don't um, never thought I spent one dollar uh, too much for it. What day did you start training? Uh, a very good day indeed. I can't remember exactly when. I had uh, about three weeks of uh, medical training, medical certification, which was very tough, and that was based in Moscow. And then there are those who can afford the $20 million now. 28-year-old South African Mark Shuttleworth will be the first African in space, spending some of the millions he made on the internet business that grew from his parents' garage. So what functions will you be performing in here? This is living quarters. There are two uh, cabins over here. I won't have a cabin. The cabin is for the, uh, for the station crew. Uh, but we will spend, the visiting crew will spend most of our time in here. This is the dining room table. Mm -hmm. That's the toilet. Looks pretty small, I've got to say. <laughs> oh, this is a very neat piece of technology. If you, if you stand over there, you'll see mm. a big silver knob. Yes. If you just, just unscrew that. Yeah. And lift. Fantastic. So that's... The dining room table for six. He's wow. disarmingly laid back, but not to be confused with the garden variety space tourist. Whether it's wrangling with a space suit in zero gravity or taking module training in Russian, it's done with intense focus. I get very frustrated by the space tourist label because I think uh, the team who's working with me on this and I are, are trying to achieve a tremendous amount that, that isn't all captured in the tourist label. Having said that, absolutely, this is for me the most incredible experience, an experience that I've wanted uh, as long as I can remember, as long as I've known space existed, uh, as long as I've known it was out there, I've wanted to be part of it. Mark Shuttleworth will spend 10 days in space, travelling by capsule to the International Space Station and staying on board before returning. He'll undertake a series of experiments on behalf of South Africa's scientific community. Yet even this doesn't convince his detractors. Georgi Grechko rightly takes his place in Russian space history. The first man to complete two space station missions, the flight engineer made three space forays in all. He was three times awarded the Order of Lenin and twice made a hero of the Soviet Union. Вот просто так, то она просто красива. То есть можно, вот у меня самый длительный полет, это был тогда рекордный, мы побили рекорд американцев, у них было 83 дня, у нас 96. И я говорю, что можно было все 96 дней просто сидеть у иллюминатора и любоваться землей. Такая она разнообразная, хотя она маленькая, но очень красивая, очень разнообразная. Russians learn to view their cosmonauts as superheroes, to see space travel as a noble cause. Georgi Grechko insists there is still too much to learn about space and what it can do for mankind to waste seats on tourists. 
ну, скажем, на каком-то новейшем самолете, там, скажем, двухместном истребителе, каком-нибудь стелсе, который там миллиард долларов, и начать на нем просто возить туристов. Можно? Можно, а почему нет? Брать с них деньги, почему нет? Но для этого ли создан этот стелс? То же самое и здесь. Зачем заниматься такой ерундой сейчас, когда столько нового там можно найти, понимаете? nor the Americans can afford to make space exploration the priority it once was. NASA is grappling with a $5 billion budget blowout and will reduce space shuttle flights. One and liftoff, liftoff of the space shuttle mission and it has cleared the tower. The Russians would have no space flights if they weren't earning money privately. Поэтому как как факт коммерциализация это очень положительный фактор. Я в этом ничего плохого не вижу. Чем плохо снять лишние там 30-40 миллионов долларов с налогоплательщиков? Эти деньги могут пойти на более солидные, но на более как бы такие социальные нужды. Хотя без космоса нам тоже не жить. Особенно так громадной стране, как Россия. Но не надо с этим спешить. Вот поспешили с американской учительницей, да? За что угробили? Когда мы идем в космос, мы знаем, за что мы рискуем, мы профессионалы. А за что и угробили ее? Просто раньше времени начали игры с космосом. Вот и все. Сейчас хотят угробить туризм, ну, тоже может вот так получиться. А во имя чего? Ну, это надуманный, надуманный довод. Во-первых, все претенденты проходят полную подготовку, начиная от медицины и кончая подготовкой существования на орбите самой. And this is what the Russians have in mind. A reusable spacecraft for suborbital flights into space, capable of taking one pilot and two passengers. Unveiling the prototype just weeks ago, they revealed they'd already sold the first few flights, due within two years. The price tag 100,000 US dollars a ticket. The Cosmopolis 21 spacecraft would be transported on the back of an aircraft before being launched into orbit reaching a distance of around 100 kilometers. Passengers would experience a few minutes of weightlessness, see the Earth from space, and, in theory, land safely. This is the space flight tourists such as Werner Schäppi are saving for, and it's predicted to be a billion dollar a year earner. Space should be for everybody. About a few thousands, up to maybe 10, 20 thousand of people who can do that in the next couple of years. They estimate that uh, it is a space tourism for everybody uh, is, is in, in, within 10 to 15 years. 
after five decades of space activities, it is time for this transportation system to evolve just like every other transportation system has evolved in the history of the world. Just like shipping, just like aircraft, just as the flights of the airmail, and the development of trucks and automobiles. Space is simply another transportation system. And it is about time, we think, that it be utilized by the average citizen. The Russians see no limits to the money-making. They've already agreed in principle to a TV game show called Space Trial, run by a Hollywood production company. Hotels, corporate sponsorships, the sky is not the limit. The Space Transportation Association does not believe that it can be too commercial. If they wanted to or make arrangements with Pepsi-Cola to put a Pepsi logo on the external tank of the space shuttle before blast-off that could be seen from five miles away, we think that would be terrific if everybody could agree on that. If you put McDonald's signs on the International Space Station, we think that is appropriate. Толков сказал, даст горы хлеба и бездну могущества. Ну, можно и туриста свозить, и заработать там 10 миллионов. Something that, that the agencies shouldn't forget is that one of the major reasons they you know, have continued to be funded is because of the ordinary person's interest in and excitement in the idea of space. And uh, there's been a tremendous uh, rebirth in that interest uh, over the last couple of years because we're now on the edges of space being accessible to, to every man. So, so suddenly it's becoming real. Is there one moment that you're looking forward to most? Lift off. Mm. That's when. That's when. You know, it'll be. It'll be. Uh, there'll be no returning. So yeah, lift off. What about touchdown? <laughs> touchdown, as they say in uh, in Russian, mirki posadki, soft landing. Here's to a soft landing. Tranquility base here. The eagle has landed.